this is a classic situation. Again, probably post ortho. And we got a lot of areas in approximately. And this is where, you know, unfortunately during orthodontics, it's really hard for them to floss. Uh, normally we'd have them using a really good floss like radius floss. If you guys ever use radius, it's a silk floss that's impregnated with xylitol. Really good at remineralization. It really does a great job of cleaning in between the teeth. And then you get anesthesia and then you get your rubber dam on and then you do your pre-wedging. The same old thing. There's some little differences here I want to show you though. So you got your Garrison Fusion uh, wedges in, nice isolation, you cut your preps. Again, the rubber dam is retracted and protected. Man, you can see things so well. Can't you? And it looks straight down, you can see things. There's no bleeding, there's no salivary contamination. That's a way to do dentistry. And it takes me maybe 30 seconds to a minute to put a rubber dam on. It is super fast. And to do the pre-wedging takes like seconds. Now what I do is just different, and I know the Garrison people have a different thought on how to do this, but what I like to do when I do quadrants like this, I'll go ahead and start at the mesial component. And I know there's a little tiny little bit of, a, of a enamel left in the central portion of that second premolar, but I'm not worried about it. Because again, you just bond even better to enamel, right? So uh, right here, I have the biotine in place and I etch again 30, 20 seconds on the enamel and the dentin for three seconds. If I see something that looks kind of fluorotic, I go 30 seconds. And then you place your universal adhesive again, let it dwell for about 10 seconds, let it penetrate, light cure it. And if you have really deep box preparations like I just had on patient, which I just finished an hour and a half ago, and I use, of course, all Garrison again, but you might want to use a dual cure primer. You know, like Tokiyama has a self-cure primer. Visco has their all bomb primer um, because you want to make sure that that adhesive cures too. So, and don't forget, nothing cures through metal. So you gotta make sure that you're not blocking it like that the Toffelmeyer does or any of those T-band matrices. So after I have the adhesive all cured, I'll inject my composite or we can pack your composite, whatever, just in the mesial component and make it a little slope. You see just the mesial component is filled on that premolar. I'll light cure that. Okay, and then I'll move my by tying ring. And the reason I do that, and I hope the pointer show up, is when I have my by tying ring here, it's separating that way and that way. If I double by tying, that force will be negated by that force. So to get a tighter contact, I'll get this done. Then I'll move the by tying in between the molar and the premolar, just takes what 10 seconds and then i'll fill this up the distal light cure that then fill the mesial and light cure that now you could do this with any bulk fill and when you do that what you do is you've pushed uh, kevin started to say something but you push this that way to make it tighter and open this up more so you open this up You've com you completely put this in, cure it so that shrinks. They can push this out a little bit more. Okay, sure, I'm pushing it out 0.112 millimeters. Okay, but I'm getting it out nice and tight. So all these are going to be nice and tight. And that's the whole idea. They're going to be nice and tight. Go ahead, Kevin. What I was going to ask you about, Dr. Cannon, is when we were filming, you mentioned about uh, you know, how on that premolar, how the bands overlap and how you deal with that sometimes, that might be oh, beneficial. Yes. Yeah, in, in fact, you see how I did take care of that, that one, they do overlap and that is something you can do one or two things on these. One is you can slide one in, then slide the other one from a slightly different direction. So if you, you slide one in, let's say more from the palatal, you start the other one more from the buckle. And so they kind of overlap naturally so what you have here is you have a double thickness okay 
What you also can do is simply take scissors and cut them. It takes a couple seconds to cut something with a scissor. The thing with matrices is you can't make them longer, but you can always make them shorter. Now, my dental assistants kind of hate that because, you know, we have everything packed and wrapped and sterile. I go, oh, I need scissors. They go, arr, arr. And open up the drawer, get the scissors out and open the pack because it's, it's an extra step. But, you know, man, there's times you have to do that. So you do. And because you want to be able to get in there and cure it and you don't want to cure it just the surface. So what I do after I get some curing going, actually, I let the assistant cure and then I start to tease the matrices back so I can cure from the buccal lingual too and get the light in and cure down toward the gingival margin. I don't want to be part of that 80% of undercured posterior composites. And you just cannot do that with a T-band or Toffelmeyer. You have to leave them on. With this, you can actually sectional matrix, peel them back and get that done. And when people say, oh, I still use T-bands, I still use Toffelmeyer, so I, I, I ask, what cell phone do you use? Do you still carry a bag phone? Because that's really old technology. T-bands and Toffelmeyers, man, that's that's dating you. That, that that means you're, you know, be like walking around with a bag phone. That's the That was okay for amalgam. It's simply not okay for resin-based composites. Just like Dical was great for amalgam, right? So here, all I've done, all I really have done, I haven't really started polishing it, is I put a little anatomy in with a raptor, but I've taken off the matrices and the wedges. And you see there still isn't any bleeding. And you see how nice and tight the contacts are and how great the contours are. And then you can just polish a little bit. I use a raptor kit to get started with the polishing. That's how I put my anatomy in. And I use, of course, I got those nicely shaped uh, carbide, spiral gold fluted carbides for going interproximally. And then you can check your occlusion. You have some very nice tight contacts and good contours. And I used to have, like everyone else, issues with contacts. I really don't anymore. 